In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make amazing backgrounds and scenery for your animation. Welcome back, guys. I've been asked how I made these backgrounds in Wild Fur and with which program. So I wanted to answer that in this uh, kind of tutorial walkthrough. I guess it's more of a time lapse with commentary, actually. But luckily, I recorded the entire process of painting the backgrounds, so I can show you exactly how I made them. And I'm really excited to do this because um, it was actually a massive learning experience for me. I learned a lot during this process, and it's really given me the confidence in Photoshop to do this more often. But firstly, let me say that I have found this to be my favorite way to make backgrounds for my flash animations it does require you to have photoshop so those of you who don't have photoshop you can get a free trial from adobe which will give you a month's free trial and trust me you can learn enough in photoshop to be able to make backgrounds for your animation within a month so i'd still recommend you try it if you can't do that, then there's free alternatives. You can download Critter, which is a program that I use. Uh, it's a painting program, and I also use it as a digital sketchbook, which is it's a really great program considering that it's free. So anyway, these lessons can mostly be applied to Critter users as well. So I was very hesitant to start painting my backgrounds in Photoshop because I'm not a confident Photoshop user, which I've already explained. But when I decided to go for it, when I was creating Wild Fur, which is my latest short film, I wanted the visuals for this to be the best I'd ever produced. So I decided to face my fears and learn how to paint in Photoshop as I went along. I remain a complete novice at Photoshop. I probably know about 1% of what Photoshop is actually capable of, but I was able to make some half-decent backgrounds with the help of some amazing custom brushes. Now, I want to talk a little bit about these custom brushes before I go into some of the techniques I use because they seriously did help me a lot in this. They are the custom brush pack uh, was made by Aaron Blaze. He's a huge inspiration to me. He's got his own YouTube channel and uh, these brushes, like he's got these tree brushes and I was able to use them to fill in the trees very fast. I would never have been able to paint that amount of trees in time if I hadn't downloaded this brush pack because there are hundreds and hundreds of trees. I had under a week to paint all of these backgrounds. So he sells custom brushes and textures and most importantly he sells some great tutorial lessons on his website and from his YouTube channel I've learned so much stuff. He's great. His website is creatureartteacher.com I recently bought his video course on how to draw big cats and it's been great so far. Um, I mean, you really get a lot for the money you spend on it. There's like hours and hours of video on there. So I'm just working my way through that and learning what I can. Anyway, so back to the paintings. So I was able to make 17 of these hand painted backgrounds for this animation in under a week. I also fitted the entire animation production schedule into only one month. So it was very intense, uh, very squashed in. I was quite stressed out a little bit towards the end. Um, I didn't get a lot of sleep and I didn't go outside that much. But I'm really glad that I did only fit it into a month because this is the kind of project that could have taken me half a year otherwise. So the main reason I was able to do so many in such little time was because I did the paintings all in one go. So I really recommend if you're going to paint your backgrounds in Photoshop, save it till like the end after you've done your key animation, your animatic storyboards and that kind of stuff. Save it till after that and go through them all in one go, like reserve a few days, reserve a weekend if you like and just see how many you can get through in a weekend. What you might even want to do is set a little timer for yourself. Maybe give yourself an hour or two hours, depending on how confident you are. Probably more around two hours, I, I don't know, for each background. And then so, you know, you're on a tight schedule. And once that hour or two hours is up, you've got to, no more details. You just move on to the next one, you know. So I sketched out the layout and composition of each background in my animatic section. And then you can see here that I dragged off each of the sketches and I exported them as their own JPEG image or PNG, I forget which one. 
And then uh, from there, I dragged them into a new Photoshop document, like each one into a new document. And then I painted over these sketches. So I had that structure to work with when I was painting. So this is a critical piece of advice for those of you who are now going to start painting your backgrounds in Photoshop. Don't just open a blank canvas on Photoshop and start painting not unless you're very experienced. I mean, people like, you know, Feng Zhu or Mark Brunet may be able to do that. But if you're like me and you're not as confident in Photoshop as you are in Flash, I'd say it's 10 times easier if you've already established your layout and the way like things look and the dynamics and stuff. That way you can concentrate on the other things in your painting. You've got a lot less to think about. So... These painters who just go in and just start painting with colors and everything, they're really good multitaskers. But it's also because they have had years of training where they're able to do certain aspects of their painting instinctively without even thinking about it. That takes years of, of training to get to that level. So I suggest that if you want to make paintings that look good, but you don't want you might want to like skip out a little phase of that. A really good way is just to tackle it all in little parts. So first focus on your composition by just sketching it out and then focus on things like your lighting, your contrast, your color and your values. So speaking of color, that's another thing that you should have established before painting in Photoshop. So I was able to have my backgrounds look very visually consistent from one to the other. And that's because I used the exact same color palette for every painting. So coming up with a color palette could be a whole tutorial in itself. But basically, it's about doing lots of research of photography and compiling colors that work well from them. Then you're able to mix and match the colors that you find. I think an important part of making a color palette is to keep in mind the ratios of color that you're going to be using. Generally, in this cold Arctic environment, desaturated blues are going to make up the majority of the color piece. And things like oranges and yellows and browns are going to be dotted in little places of interest in the composition. So it's not as if when you make your color palette, you use each of the colors equally. There's going to be certain ratios within them. But I really need to make a whole separate video on that because it's a very deep topic. Okay, so I haven't even gotten to the best part about this whole thing yet. <laughs> what makes me very excited. What I ended up doing in some of the shots was separately exporting the layers and moving them in Flash on different layers. Uh, this technique was mainly inspired by Keep Walking, who is uh, an amazing artist and animator who I greatly admire. And I've actually had the opportunity to work with him on an animation. And it's a great experience because I'm able to see how he's made these scenes in Flash. And he's painted all of the backgrounds in Photoshop and then brought them in on different layers and it looks really cool and amazing and uh, that was one of the biggest inspirations for me actually taking this step and using Photoshop in my animations. It's actually extremely easy to do so you just need to hide the layers you don't want and export as a PNG with opacity enabled. I think it's opacity or um, alpha whatever you want to call it. Then you drag them into Flash on separate layers and make them into symbols and tween them individually. And you can tween them in like a parallax effect. That's the kind of effect that I like the most, I think, because it gives your animation a very three-dimensional, multi-layered feeling to it. When you use Photoshop with Flash in this way, it does a great job of hiding Flash's limitations. I think people often see Flash as being a very limited program, but really it Flash is not as limited as people think. I think, in fact, that these limitations can actually work to the animator's advantage a lot of times. I know some people will disagree with that, but, you know, there's always these animators who are able to make even the most simple programs work to their advantage. You know, 
there are like some amazing artists who can work on Microsoft Paint and Windows Movie Maker. It's ridiculous. But I'm not saying that Flash is as bad as <laughs> or as good as those programs. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Flash is not really good for making background art. Whenever I try and make good backgrounds for my Flash animations, I do feel a little bit frustrated by it. I It's just, it's been very difficult. And so if you make them in Photoshop instead, it makes up for this by a lot. Oh yeah, I just remembered. I wanted to show this little tip. You'll see that when I'm painting, I've made a little wireframe border square around it. Now, what that actually is, how to explain this. So that border is the actual border of the animation, right? And you'll see that I've painted outside those border lines there. So what that does is it allows me to, when I bring it into Flash, it doesn't have to fit exactly in the frame and it allows me to motion tween it across a little bit. You see, so when you paint the backgrounds, I strongly recommend that you paint them larger than the actual canvas size. And that way it will allow you to pan your shots across a little bit, maybe add in some camera shake if you need it, and it won't go outside those boundaries. So anyway, where was I? Okay, so if time allows it, I'm definitely going to hand paint my backgrounds from now on. So expect that in the next animation. Well, in fact, I didn't actually have time when making Surviving the Fall, which is an animation that's still in production. I still have to get around to finishing it. But I'm okay with that because I feel like the style of Surviving the Fall seems a little bit more surreal, maybe like a children's novel or something. I don't know. But regardless of that, I didn't have time to paint them anyway. So I think that's all I've got. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment if you like. Also, I have a website where you can download the source files for this, uh, source files on the actual animation, so you can see how I've integrated them. I know I've described a lot of it, but you can actually go in and look for yourself. You can also download the composition grid templates for it. So my website, animatorguild.com, please check it out. If this tutorial helped you to make something, I invite you to send it to me uh, over YouTube message or post it on the discussion board on my channel or something i'll find it send it to me and i will feature it in my next video i'd really want to start promoting more of the artists who are watching my videos that's something i want to start doing so thank you for watching and i'll see you next time in the next tutorial which is going to be next week on friday goodbye like on a glide cam or something. A way of revealing all of these various bumps in your animation is to scrub or play through the animation at a faster rate than what you would normally play at. Then as it's playing through, focus on a different corner or line each time it's playing through and just